Welcome to this video on the amortized analysis of the doubling strategy for dynamic arrays. There is a video completely about dynamic arrays, so if you want to know more about that, it also includes this analysis, but if you just want to see the analysis itself, this is the video for you. Let's get started. What we want to analyze is a running time t of n of n push operations. And we have an initial capacity of c. So the first c push operations, we can simply do a constant time by adding the elements to that array. But then for the C plus first element, I need to double the array size. I need to copy the old elements over. So that will cost me O of C time. And then again, I get constant time operations until I hit the capacity of 2C. And then I need to double to 4C, copy the elements over and so on. And then again, I get ones until I hit 4C and so on. The general form of these terms is for one, we have ones, but also we have these terms of the type 2 to the i times c. c, 2c, 4c, 8c, in general, 2 to the i times c. The question is, how far does this continue? It continues until I have the last term of the type 2 to the i times c, which is below n. So the last such power is the following. It is 2 to the logarithm of n divided by c, round it down times c. Okay, and then we might at the end have a couple of more ones. So why is this the last such term? Because 2 and log, those are inverse, so this term here, that is essentially n divided by c, and n divided by c times c is n. Now n might not be divisible by c, n divided by c might not be a power of 2, so I might end up slightly lower than n. But then the next power of 2 would go would be larger than n. So this is the last power of 2, such that this power times c is smaller than n. So let's add up these terms. First of all, we have lots of 1s, and we can group those. We can simply add all of those together. We have these 1s here, we have these 1s here, we have these 1s here, and so on. How many such 1s do I have? I have at most n push operations, so I have at most n such ones. So if I add all of these up, I get a term smaller or equal n. Now I just need to take care of the c, 2c, and so on terms. So let me write them down once more. We have c plus 2c plus and so on. In general, 2 to the ic. And this goes up to 2 to the log n divided by c, c. Let's take the c outside of the sum. So this is n plus c, c times 1, c times 2, and so on. In general, these terms are 2 to the i terms, and they go up to 2 to the log n divided by c. Now, it remains to evaluate this sum here. And that is a so-called geometric series with 2 as a base. And we know what that is. So this is namely the last term, so 2 to the log n divided by c, times 2 minus 1. So you know this from, for instance, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 8 times 2, 16 minus 1, 50. And that holds in general. And we can plug that in here. So we get n plus c times 2 to the log n divided by c, round it down, plus 1 minus 1. So the plus 1 in the exponent just says times 2. So 2 to the log n divided by c, that's simply order n divided by c, times 2 is still n divided by c of order. The minus 1 also doesn't matter in terms of the asymptotics. So we have n plus c theta of n divided by c, which then simply is theta of n. So we can now conclude that the amortized running time operation, which is simply this total running time, t of n, divided by n, that is theta of n divided by n, so that is simply theta of 1. And with this, we can conclude that the doubling strategy works well. Thanks for watching.